the third lesson in, of section C which is on waves and um, we're going to look at light waves. Now in section one I looked at the law of reflection and said that the angle of instance equals the angle of reflection in the plane mirror. Um, so I'm going to move forwards and look at Snell's law which is more complicated. Um, so if we look at Snell's law um, we remember this okay. So if for example we take um, glass, when, air go, when a light ray goes from uh, air into glass, it's entering a more optically dense medium. So therefore, it will refract, it will change direction and bend towards the normal as it slows down. Now, we can mathematically model this and calculate the refractive index of the glass by saying the refractive index is sine i divided by sine r, which is sine 40 divided by sine 27. Um, so, we could say sine of 40 divided by the sine of 27 equals 1.41. So the refractive index, the refractive index of this n equals 1.41. Okay? Now it could be more difficult than that. Alright? We could be asked to calculate the angles instead of uh, the refractive index. So when we were given the refractive index you might be asked to calculate the angle, so that's slightly more difficult. So if you're asked to calculate the angle, we've got to remember refractive index equals sine i over sine r. So for example, if we were given the refractive index n and we were given the refractive uh, the, the angle of sine of r, the uh, angle of refraction, then we would say that sine i equals sine r comes up to the other side of the equation, we multiply both sides by sine r, and it will be n times sine r. Okay? Now, when we know n and sine r, we have to remember then how to rearrange this equation. So i would become the inverse sine of n sine r. And that's how we'd rearrange that equation. Alright? And if we were given it in the all the way around, we could say n equals sine i over sine r. And if we were given n and sine i and we wanted sine r, sine of r would equal sine of r, multiply both sides and take it to the top, and then divide both sides by n. So sine r becomes sine i over n. And because we want r on its own, r would equal the inverse sine of sine i over n. And that's how I'd rearrange that equation in order to find out the answer. So for example, okay, so in the question they say to us, the refractive index of a substance is 2.1 and the angle of refraction equals 20 degrees. What is the angle of instance? So we would say sine i equals n sine r. So sine i equals 2.1 times the sine of 20. Now if you wanted to, you could work this out at this stage, what this is here. I would then equal, we need to take our sine to the other side, so I would equal sine to the minus 1 of two point one sine 20. And we will put that in our calculator, so we would have the sine of 20 and times that by 2.1. And now if we Inverse sine our answer, we get 45.9 degrees. And at the end of every answer, I always look at every answer and think, does that make sense? Is it realistic? I and mean, if we look at this, that is realistic because you would expect the instant angle to be bigger than the refracted angle and also given that the, that, that the refractive index is so large 
we can see why we've got such a such a change in direction. Okay? Now we also learned total internal reflection. Now total internal reflection is when light speeds up as it goes to leave a more optically dense medium into a less optically dense medium and if that angle is above the critical angle then the light will totally internally reflect. So the model we've used in, the, uh, in lessons would be this. Often we do this with a semicircular glass block and if we take on normal. So, when light goes from a slower, more optically dense medium into a faster, less optically dense medium, so we go from glass to air, as it speeds up it will bend away from the normal. So we have an instant angle, a refracted angle, and it bends away. Now, as we move this out, this angle bends further and further. And there's an angle called the critical angle when the light will go along at 90 degrees to the plane. And this angle here is called the critical angle. C, the critical angle. So that would be called the critical angle. Now, if you have a beam where the angle is greater than the critical angle, you get total internal reflection. This ray of light will never leave this block here. It will just be totally internally reflected. Now there's an equation that you've learned for this, and that is that the refractive index equals 1 divided by sine of the critical angle, or sine c is 1 over n. So if you're asked to find out what would be the critical angle for this if the refractive index of the glass was 1.5. So you could say sine C is 1 divided by 1.5. So C equals inverse sine of 1 divided by 1.5, which would equal 1 divided by 1.5 inverse sine of that answer would equal 41.8 degrees and what that means is if the angle is greater than that you get total internal reflection if it is equal to that you get the blue line and if it is smaller than that the light will be the red line and it will leave the block now that's the most important thing to remember about um, refraction. Snell's law and critical angle and total internal reflection. Now it's used in things like fiber optics. So as long as the angle is okay, a light wave can be totally internally reflected inside a fiber optic, okay? As long as this angle is not, not too small, which would cause it to leave instead, all right? And the very last thing on this particular topic is called dispersion. Now, um, dispersion is the last thing on this uh, Okay, and all the spatial is this. If you take white light, and if white light enters a prism, then what happens is the white light contains all the colours of this visible spectrum. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. Now all of these colours will be refracted by different amounts. Now when we see white light, when we look at this whiteboard, we're seeing all of those colours. But when those colours pass through this glass prism, the colours are refracted by slightly different amounts. And what that does is it splits the white light into the colours of the visible spectrum. And this is called dispersion. So what happens is we end up with red, 
and it goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. So we would get all the colours of the, spect of the spectrum coming out red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet down at the bottom. Okay? That's called dispersion and it's just caused by the fact that different colours refract by different amounts when they go into glass.